Well, we're joined now by Paul Bitter, the Chief Executive of the British Horse Racing Authority. Are you pleased to have him back? Very pleased to have him back, John. Um, he's been one of the world's great riders for the past 20 years and um, he's served his time and he's just given a very honest assessment of, of what happened and I think from the sports perspective, yeah, everyone in the sport's looking forward to having him back. You have two great jockeys, uh, Frankie Dettori and uh, Kieran Fallon, both within months of each other found not by the British tests but by French tests to have taken cocaine. What's going wrong with British testing? No, there's nothing going wrong with British testing. I mean, Frankie made the point that he regularly gets tested in this country as he does in every, in every country that they ride in. Um, our riders on average get tested about four times a season, but those that are more active, such as Frankie and Kieran, will get tested more often than that. I think Frankie was tested half a dozen times in 2012. Um, so there's no, there's no fundamental difference between the tests. But there is something strange in that uh, you, you have these two cases and uh, in a sense it's a bit like Lance Armstrong which in a, perhaps an unfortunate reference by Frankie there. Um, and it is possible as long as the tests are conducted in a certain kind of a way to evade them. And here you have the French allowing a much, or they clearly have a procedure which goes much further back in the the body's system to, to dredge up these remnants? Well, our testing is not dissimilar and the reality is that the, on a benchmarking perspective, the, the amount of positives that we have, it's, it's very low, but it's comparative to other jurisdictions, so it's not massively out of kilter with other jurisdictions. Have you tightened it up? We have, and in fact, in 2012, we almost doubled the number of tests on riders that we did. So, as I said, we, we did about 1,700 in 2012. And, and briefly, the culture in Newmarket, I mean, if you go to the taxi rank, they all talk about it. They say recreational drugs are rife in Newmarket. Well, I mean, racing is full of rumours and we deal in the facts and the facts are that on average our riders are tested four times a season, some more. There's no evidence that this is an endemic issue in the sport. Um, but as I said, racing is always, it is in every jurisdiction full of rumour. So do the horses where really the much bigger scandal resides. And you're already investigating another substance, this stuff called Sungate which seems to contain anabolic steroids and is in use. How widespread, how much further than the Godolphin stables does doping horses go? Well, in specific to the Godolphin issue, that investigation is ongoing as it is with Sungate. Um, and we are aware off the back of the Jared Butler case that, um, that the vets that issued that to Jared Butler have also issued it to a number of other stables and that investigation is ongoing. Um, it ultimately... But that's a pretty big, big disaster, isn't it? Well, it's, it's the sort of coverage that any sport wouldn't like to have. But I think if you look at it on an international perspective, British racing is considered to be very well regulated. British racing surely has taken over from world cycling. Oh, I think that's a very harsh assessment and the facts just simply don't, don't stack that up. I mean, but Godolphin... see, what world cycling has done to cure its ills mm. has been to have an absolutely blanket international standard. You don't have that. I mean, there's a different no, we story in, we... in Dubai, it's a different uh, story in Australia. Absolutely, but what I would say is that actually British racing is the high watermark for what that international standard should be. But you make a very good point, John, and one of the things that we're pursuing, you know, largely we've been pursuing it for a while, but the Godolphin issue gives us the opportunity to highlight it, is the need to have consistent rules, mm -hmm. drug rules, um, not just for horses out of training, but horses in training. But there's um, a huge difference between horses and cycling. Horses don't have any choice. It's what they get pumped with. And that's a horrible thought. It is a horrible thought, but our, I mean, our testing, I would agree with you if, that, if these two cases highlighted a failing in the regulation of the sport, but in fact you could argue that the regulation of the sport has actually identified these issues. So we identified the issue with Godolphin through our testing and training program, which is similar to out of competition testing in other sports. Very briefly, how long to clean the whole thing up? Uh, well, it's an ongoing issue. It's, uh, we'll deal with the Godolphin issue over the next couple of weeks, but, you know, as far as drugs in our sport goes, we'll, we'll never be complacent about that. Paul Bitter, thank you very much for Thanks, coming John. in. Thanks, Appreciate that.